My name is Adam Shiverdecker and I live in Berkeley, California. For this Art Access conversation today, I will discuss the conceptual drivers of my work as well as my process and how they relate to industry. My work is interested in military machines because of the way that these machines speak to the fact that our most advanced technologies can also be our deadliest. Titled Unmanned, this is some recent work that reflects my interest. It is a quarter scale replica of an MQ-9 Reaper drone measuring 8 feet long and 17 feet across. The title, Unmanned, also alludes to the duality of the object. Yes, there is no physical pilot on board, yet there are many people that have encountered its destructive force. My renderings of these machines try to capture their elegant design and their self-destruction simultaneously. Here is a close-up of the propeller section of Unmanned. This is porcelain over nichrome wire. Clay objects, like the machines that I reference in my work, seem to predict their own future. That is, once clay is fired, you know exactly how it's going to go wrong. In this image of a Japanese midget submarine recovered in Pearl Harbor in December of 1941, I am very struck by the one sleek object that has encountered such force as to expose its substructure through subtle variation in its skin of steel. The dimpling of its skin exposes its gridded substructure, hinting at more interesting forms that lie beneath its surface. Leviathan, depicted here, is based on an atomic submarine. We see it here in a gallery of space floating above Tampa Bay, Florida almost as if it has been recovered from the nearby waters like the Japanese sub. It measures 12 feet long and was constructed over the course of two years. My aesthetic considers that moment of destruction, of capturing the tearing away of the flesh of the object, as depicted here in the Hindenburg disaster. I look at these forms of destruction as a beginning point rather than an end point. The properties of clay allow for a similar depiction of destruction and vulnerability of the object portrayed. My work does investigate those properties and brings the natural qualities of the material to the surface by cracking and breaking at various stages in my process. As we see here in my installation titled Banquet of the Leviathan, my work imagines what would happen if the entire military arsenal were simply pushed into the ocean. I am drawn to the sleekness, the power, and the materiality of machines of war. My work attempts to represent my ambivalence to icons of military might by taking the forms of predator drones, fighter jets, and submarines and denaturing their surfaces. By reforming these weapons out of wire, I reference both the practice of children's war games and modeling, as well as everyday forms of construction like fence building. I then coat these structures in irregular amounts of clay, allowing for an arbitrary amount of decay. It is this fantasy of decay of a culture that could regard weapons of war as follies and as disintegrating monuments to an earlier era, which my work tries to trigger. An MQ-1 Predator drone taking on characteristics of fractured ancient Greek pottery soars above the banquet. There's partly a DIY aspect to this drone as a nod to the readily available drones that anyone can purchase. This is Abaddon. The titles for much of my work are taken from my interest in linking mythical characters to objects of destruction. Abaddon, according to various texts, is known as a destroyer and a keeper of the abyss. Here I link that character to an aircraft carrier, a massive hulking object that floats on water and carries other weapons. Like cultural artifacts, my work puts on display the objects found useful today, but with a certain lifespan, like this piece that references an F-22 fighter jet. Growing up near Dayton, Ohio, I often observed racing shadows over the nearby fields. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base was nearby, and much of the area was involved in manufacturing and industry. I also apply the logic of industry and transformation to historical forms, specifically Greek ceramic vessels. I'm interested in these Greek vessels because of the way they represent a culture that venerates war and conflict, as this seems to anticipate elements of our own culture. This work in form and scale references the famed Francois vase. I began working with the ancient Greek form, the amphora, in 2011 precisely because of its ubiquity in museum collections. It struck me as a precursor to the Ikea Dinera mug. Upon further research, I realized that there were many overlapping themes of ancient Greek culture and my own work that references military machines. These works simultaneously meld together the past and present. The collision of old and new are interests of mine as well. While the works seen here were produced within a couple months, start to finish, I deliberately built these so that the sections are understood as constructed at different times. The porcelain forms are wheel thrown. Nichrome wire is then inserted while the clay is leather hard. The pieces fired to cone tin in reduction, then the wire forms were finished post firing. A chunky dark stoneware slurry was thrown on the wire in a similar manner to Jackson Pollock's application of paint to his action paintings. It's quite theatrical. Then the pieces fired once more to adhere the clay to the wire. In a solo exhibition from a few years ago, on a Grecian urn, 
further delves into ancient Greek forms with varying aesthetic investigations. Here's a larger than life version of a Riton, a horn shaped drinking vessel. I wanted to make it look almost liquid and the Riton format was a reference point, but not the mold. Here's my take on a reconstructed amphora. I often think about what is lost and what is gained from leaving certain areas unattended. Since this image was taken, this specific piece has transformed yet again. While it measured 28 inches high in this image, due to improper packing and shipping procedures on my part, and quite possibly falling off of the UPS truck, it now rests collapsed in a form that resembles a deflated basketball. I have since corrected my packing and shipping methods. In this Kylix, I portray new and ancient technologies as surface images to further this collision of old and new. I currently live in the Bay Area of Northern California. It truly is a remarkable place, but ripe with constant reminders of income inequality. In my most recent large-scale work, I referenced the tail section of a Learjet in an attempt to comment on the objects and possessions of the wealthy. It's not an admonishment of wealth, but more about the fragility and volatile nature of certain industries.